Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I have another superstar. I have Sarah O'Connor, who was Swing Cover Jenna Cover Dawn in Waitress most recently, which sadly has shut, which is a massive shame. I got to see it once before it closed. How did you feel when you found out about the closing of Waitress? I was taken by surprise. Um, I thought, I think a lot of us, as we all thought at the beginning, this would be a lot, of a, short, a lot shorter of a time than it's turned out to be. So I think the official termination of the contract was a massive, was a massive shock and loss to us all. I think we're really missing it. Anyone that has worked on the show, um, be it any department at all, in front of house, in the building, once you're in the building and in that kind of family of waitress, it really is a very special show. So I think a lot of us are mourning that at the moment. It's, uh, it's really tough because we were hoping just to have that last four months because we were already closing in July, which to me was already too short. So to not even know when we had the last show was really, really tough. So there was no closure for any of us. So, you know. So how long was your run in Waitress? Uh, just over a year. So we started rehearsing 7th of January 2019. And we, I think we had our last show around the 10th, 11th, maybe a little bit later than that um, in, in March. So yeah, just over a year. So were you like everyone else in the like the West End that you went in for like morning rehearsals and you were w warming up and everything and then you came in and they told you or was it? Oh, well, on the Saturday before we didn't do the Monday show. So on our last day that we didn't know we had. Um, it was Sarah Borellis, Gavin Creel and Natasha were all leaving and um, because they had to go back to America because they had closed the, they were closing the borders Trump had announced that so they were like right we need to get back Natasha had her whole family here Sarah and Gavin wanted to just get back to their family and their parents and, and everyone obviously and um, to get back to their homeland so they had to go back so we had lost three principals we had people out sick COVID, not COVID related, we don't know. So the swings were working overtime on that Monday. We knew it was going to be crazy. Um, you know, Lucy and Dave were still away. All this kind of thing was happening. So all of us, as a, as a swing and as a cover, we were working very hard and we were down so many people. So we all came into work on the Monday and the swings were probably on stage from about five till quarter past six and then around quarter past six instead of doing warm-up we were called into the circle which we usually do after warm-up and they announced it there so we had just practiced all of the cut show because the cut show was so hard we were being everyone every plate every fork was covered but it was crazy and um, so the swings were really kind of pumped and ready to go and I actually looked at that video the other day I have a video that I made just before the announcement going come on swings come on dance captains you know all across the West End, we've got this, because a lot of us as shows were down a lot of people through illness and uh, we never got to do it, which is really sad. So when they announced that you were like, you were going home, did you still have hope that at that moment that you were going back at some point or did you just kind of think then, all right, I've just got to know that we're probably not going back? Um, God, even two months later, I get really emotional thinking about it. Um, um, God, I wasn't expecting this. Okay, so I think there was the hope. Can we pause? Yeah, I can pause. Okay, so we just needed to pause there for a second because Sarah had a little breakdown. Um, I, you see, it's still, I'm not embarrassed that I cry about it. I'm very open that not every day is great. And um, we're recording on the day that was my first official Jenna. So today and the last few days, it's been a year since I first played it. So, you know, you kind of have those days where you're a little bit more sad than others. Um, but I've no idea why that particular question took me off guard, actually. I think it's because I go back to that time and it was only the last few days I really looked over all those photos on that day. To answer your question without crying this time, um, basically when we were told, it was like a, okay, people have been told not to come to theatres. Let's just, let's just go home and see what happens. Um, I did gather some of the stuff from my room. A lot of people left the building really quick and me Liv and Piers stayed on the, on the stage. I just took some photos just to be on the safe side. I'll probably share them at some stage online. And it's just me. I'd done all the stuff to, you know, war, get ready to warm up, whatever. And I just took a photo of me in the Adelphi. I took a photo of the diner. And I went upstairs, upstairs to the dressing room. I think I was one of the last people to leave the building. And I took a few things and my MD came up and we had a quick chat. And my assistant MD, we had a quick chat. Leanne was, was gone. 
a lot a few, few people went to the pub but I just wasn't in a celebratory mood um to to be even with anyone to kind of not celebrate they weren't celebrating they were just being together I think um I just wanted to go straight home to my boyfriend and just kind of have a glass of wine and a big pizza and just cry and just kind of soak in what was happening so um yeah it was it was in the back of my mind going this could be a while but I definitely didn't think that was our last show but I did say to Leanne Pinder could Saturday have been it and she was like I don't know I really don't know and it it saddens me that it was but um it, it's obviously going on tour so it has a, another life and it will come in back into town in, in the future I'm sure it's amazing but um it does make yeah I think yeah still raw sometimes it's mad that some days I'm absolutely fine and I feel strong and I'm positive about it and then other days you know like today where chatting about it makes me feel a little bit sad and you know I'm quite open about how I feel I think it's good to feel all whatever you need to feel so I had a cry, Becca, I don't care. Go on. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So I'll ask you one more question about Waitress about closing, if that's okay. Uh, sure. Like how, how much time did you have? Did you find out much before the announcement that the whole world got the announcement or did you? The night before, there was one awful tweet insinuating that we'd closed, which was correct, but it was just a cyber bullying beyond belief um basically saying oh thank god it's gone or whatever and we were just like you know what my if that's your soul fine go see you later um but the following morning it was announced so we already knew the night before and we talked about it as a cast and you know we rang each other and had our cries and had our talks and whatever so uh, we were prepared and, and ready for the announcement but it still hurt of course but we're you know sad for the show but yeah can't believe people that waste their time saying stuff like that when they like, honestly like them, so. i've no so, i've no time for it i'm absolutely off of free speech and all that but i think kindness is the key to everything i think you, there's a way of saying everything even if you don't agree you don't have to agree with everything you don't have to like the show but um i just think kindness comes first there's a way to do everything and it just wasn't dealt with correctly but you're that's all over the world unfortunately you know in, in every in every walk of life online in person it's everywhere but you're we can just do our best individually. That's true. So we'll move on to, so before the interview, you spoke to me about when you found out that you'd got the pie and waitress. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, it was great. I was in rehearsals for Celtic Angels and it was like, it's like an Irish, very traditional Irish music. And it was a Christmas show as well. So we had some Christmas music and I was uh, in Ireland rehearsing and um, before we flew to Florida and I got a call from my agent at 10 o'clock in the morning I was in the gym um, and I ran out and one of the girls I was rehearsing with was like that was really weird and I came back in and I was like <sighs> I didn't know what to do with myself and she was like Are you okay I was like yeah and she was like what happened I was like I can't talk about it and she was kind of like new but new not to ask because you're not allowed to tell anyone when you get a job like that so um she knew, of course she knew, because she knew I was waiting, because um, one of the girls I was working with all, knew me from years previous. And uh, so none of them asked because, you know, and I just had one of those days where I was like, oh my God, like what's happening? And then uh, my mom came over to the rehearsal studios, that well, it was actually a hotel, came over to the hotel that night. And um, we just had a celebratory drink and just, it was so nice. I was so glad I was in Ireland when I found out because I could celebrate with my family. And uh, then I flew uh, for the next month, flew around all of that part of Southern North America. And I got to practice the accent straight away. I was just like, great, I'm in where it's supposed to be set. It's not set in an official place, but um, I'm in those areas where it's kind of the diner would be. So I got to really listen to people and hone in and just kind of learn a bit about who they are and what kind of life they were. And I went to loads of diners and waffle houses and all that and you know they literally drink coffee like water and I I could see so much of that when I went into the rehearsal room and it was like this is cool so I learned on the tour bus I had hours on the bus like sometimes 10 9 10 hours on a bus to get to the next venue uh, I say bus it was a tiny little van and uh, I was in the back and I'd always have my earphones in and the girl I was sitting well I was sitting beside different girls different days and they kind of go, what you doing? I'm like, just learn and wait, just 
I mean, um, just listening to Waitress, and they're like, okay, you know, because I couldn't tell them. But um, I had Jenna learned before I went into the rehearsal room purely because I had 10 hours a day on a bus. So it was great crack. So, actually, I forgot to ask one question. So Waitress must have been a big deal for you when you found out that you got that part. But then how did you feel when you found out that Sarah and Gavin were coming into... Because that must have been a big... Oh my God. Okay. So from the beginning, I always thought Sarah would come at some stage because you can obviously see how the, the production has worked from Broadway and they bring people in and out all the time. So I knew Kat would be for a while. Lucy, I hoped would be for ages. And luckily we got her what would have been to the end anyway. But um, I was still surprised. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, we all knew it was going to happen, but it seemed to happen really quickly. Um, and I also was away for the the time they rehearsed, I was in, um, I, I was away on holiday. So it was really weird to come back to work and all of a sudden Sarah was there. I was like, oh my God, this is so weird. Cause I hadn't seen her since we rehearsed and she was in directing and kind of giving us notes and, you know, giving us her input for the show. And it, when I heard, I had no idea it was going to be Gavin coming in with her. When I heard it was him, I was like, oh my God, like I love him. It's a bittersweet moment because it's amazing. Like, I mean, beyond amazing when you're here going to work out with the per work with the person that a wrote the show b you loved anyway and c like she's she's coming into it to lead you i just thought it was amazing and i'm a massive gavin creel fan like huge and um, i just think his voice is something else and to get him see what he does on stage was like way more magical than i even anticipated like it was amazing and um, because i've never seen him live so that was really cool um but then you're losing lucy and and dave so that was really hard but you know they're coming back so it's kind of all good and you know i stayed in touch went for coffee with lucy and stuff so it's lovely but it's very weird but very awesome i mean it's a dream it's not a dream why wouldn't you want to work with them they're just pros amazing waitress was one of the first musicals i saw i've only seen two musicals in my life and i got to see waitress with sarah Brellis, and it was just <sighs> Amazing. Honestly, she's the epitome of Gem Jenna. She's just, it's obviously in her soul. It's in her as a person. She wrote it, but, um, oh, it's God, it's magic to watch. It's magic to watch. And Gavin is hilarious. Their relationship's great, you know, on and off stage. They're just, their chemistry is unbelievable. It's great. I think I said it in one of my other interviews, but uh, I surprised my girlfriend. Her favourite singer is Sarah Brellis. And, um, but we live in Aberystwyth, which is in Wales. So uh, uh -huh. we just, I just told her, all right, tomorrow we're getting on a coach. She didn't tell her where we were going. And it took us seven and a half hours. <laughs> so I just told wow. Her wow. That's a lot. You know what? So, totally worth it though. Totally it worth it. Because she got to meet Sarah Reynolds. Obviously her favourite singer in the whole world. She got to meet her and she was just, Amazing. so I don't know how I'm going to top that next anniversary. <laughs> oh gosh. I don't know either. <laughs> Hopefully the theatre will be back open anyway for you. So uh, another show that you've been in was Evita. Yeah. So do you want to sort of talk a little bit about that? I am. Um, it was my first time to do a UK tour. We did a UK tour. Um, actually, we did part of Europe as well. Um, before we went into the Phoenix Theatre in London, so it was really cool. When we got to transfer to 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 town, which was awesome. But um, I've never done any uh, any theatre around the UK, which was cool for me. I mean, I loved the show. I didn't, I didn't know much about it. I couldn't say I was a massive fan of the show before I did it because I didn't know it amazingly well. But obviously, as I learned it, I fell in love with it. I thought The Mistress was a lovely little part. It's, it's mad how just one song and one moment and one tiny character can be written so well that you feel for her. And she's on stage for, like, God, no time at all. Uh, you just leave Ava to go and do the rest of the work. Um, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. I loved the company I was working with. I've made some really good friends from that company. They were really, really great people. And it was really cool. I mean, I didn't know I'd fall in love with such places like Blackpool. I absolutely love Blackpool. I never thought I'd say that. Uh, York, Cardiff, um, Bristol, they were among my favourites, I think. Oh, Edinburgh was incredible. Um, and that's when I first started drinking wine as well on tour. So I, you know, became a little connoisseur there. Um, so I never drank wine before that tour. So that was another thing that taught me. Um, what else about Evita? Oh, gosh, it was just a great experience. I loved it. And we got to go to Germany and Switzerland as well, which was really cool. Really, really cool. So what was your favourite place to tour? If you had to pick one place. Bristol. I think, oh, York. 
York because my family, some of my family came to York. So I had a great few days there and the sun sh was shining a lot. But Bristol, oh, Bristol or York, oh, they had the best lemon cheesecake. No, it wasn't lemon cheesecake. What was it? Lemon drizzle cake in the, um, oh, what's it? Boston Tea Party? Okay, Bristol because of the cake. Has to be. Yeah. That's a good reason <laughs> to, to live a place. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's amazing. So um, another show you're in. Uh, I'm just going to try and speed through it a little bit because I, I know you're excited to go and enjoy the sun. Now we're allowed to. I know my first day out in the sun. I'm so excited. I've got so, my tan. Um, I'm ready to go. <laughs> let's talk about Lamus. Oh God, uh, best job ever. Outside a waitress, best job. I don't think a lot will top it. It's a really special show to be part of. Um, the longer it goes on, the more people are getting to enjoy it and to be in it. It's definitely was on the tick list. Uh, Eponine was a dream that I was afraid to have, I think, because there's a very small window that you can make something like that. People don't want to leave the show. You have to be the right age. You have to, you know, so you have to wait for that jigsaw moment. And it really was just the perfect jigsaw moment. And for them to see an opportunity to give me a swing a swing job was amazing. I learned so much on the job. Um, it broadened my vocal abilities so much. I could never sing up as high as I can now. I went in going, oh God, I have to cover all these sopranos. And I wasn't confident in that. Even though I'd trained classically, I just didn't feel I was ready for it. And then within weeks, my voice was changing and evolving. And I think I was also at that age where your voice is still changing a bit. And uh, I just loved it. I loved it and I can't wait to see the new version actually. I'm really, really excited to see that. Um, so hopefully I'd love to go back and do that again someday. Um, yeah, it's a show I'll never get sick of. I just love it. It's my favourite musical. My favourite musical. Know, it's also such an iconic show. With Waitress. Was, was that like, Sorry. with it being so iconic, was that scary going on for the first time thinking, oh, there's so many people that are like diehard, they love Les Mis. Yes, I, I, the fan thing wasn't as big back then. That's definitely evolved more through Instagram and stuff. I did have online Twitter from that year, um, but I didn't have it before then. So I don't think, um, I think I got it around 2011. Yeah, so 2012, 13, I was doing Les Mis. And I, I don't think the fandom online was as big a thing then. So I wasn't aware of what people were and weren't saying. Um, there's some fans that are still following me through from then. But they're people I see. I, I didn't, they weren't online people at the time. So I think uh, I wasn't aware. The only pressure I had was from myself uh, with Eponine. I will never forget the, fr the, the first time that music started. I put the hat on and I was like, oh my God, this is happening. And I, it wasn't my best performance at all. It was, it was average. It was fine. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, the nerves got too much. So I never let that happen again. And I just loved it. I mean, oh gosh, it's just one of those one of those roles. But at the end of the day, every time that music came, da 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 da. Oh my god, my whole body would be like, oh, this is like this. Oh, I loved it. Never got bored. Not a day in that building. I'd go back to it tomorrow. In fact, can I go back to it tomorrow? <laughs> Might not be anyone there, but I'm sure you can go back to the building. <laughs> I'll just sing outside. Sing to someone in the street. It'd be fine. Imagine if you did, that is someone walking past in the street and they go, who's this weirdo thinking they could sing outside the Labour Theatre? And you're like, actually. Actually, guys, I used to be on that wall. So just saying, just saying. So um, I've got, I'm not sure if this is your first show or one of your first shows, but I've got Mamma Mia on my list. Is that? Yes, Mamma Mia, because I did the commitments between Evita and Les Mis, which was amazing. Palace. Um, really cool to be Irish and not to work too hard at the accent, which was great. And it was all about a girl with an attitude. Again, didn't have to work very hard. Um, so Mamma Mia, first job, big shock. Went in for a random audition. Apologies if you can hear my washing machine. <laughs> um, I went to a random audition for it uh, through college. I was in my Easter break in my third year. I mean, geez, I wasn't expecting a recall. I was just like, oh my God, I'm in. This is so cool. I went and bought myself a pair of jeans and trainers. And they were like, great. Within, I think it was five or six days, I'd done all my auditions, kept getting my recalls. It was fantastic. And then all of a sudden, I'd gone on my Easter break and I'd come back with a West End job. I was like, what the hell just happened? It was amazing. Uh, 
big shock. I mean, my whole life changed that day, that week. I started a few weeks later. My whole life just went upside down. I had no idea. I'd never really been in London. I was out in Essex when I was training, so I never really came to London except for a show. And honestly, it was the beginning of the rest, like of the, what's been the rest of my life since. Like it's now my way of life, but I had no idea what was coming. Amazing. That's amazing. So do you, do you think you'll ever forget your first job? Do you think that's going to be something you'll never be able to forget? No, no way. My closest, closest friends, bar people from home, are from that job. And, um, you know, they're my closest confidants. My, actually, my, one of my, my best, best friends was, is, was my dresser on that show. And, um, I, God, I love her so much, you know. And a lot, of, a lot of people on that job I have in that kind of bracket of really close friends. Um, about three or four people and you know they know we know each other so well because it's been 10 years oh god has it been 10 years oh it's not has it no nine nine years it's been nine years since then so you know we've all kind of developed as people so I look back to then I'm like god so much has happened since then you can never forget your first job for sure I mean it depends on everyone's first job you might have hated your first job maybe you don't want to remember it but my first job was a west end job I mean that's just madness it's not some, no one set out to go well yeah I'm gonna straight to the west end it was luck it was timing hard work of course but you know and there's a lot of things that fall into line a lot of people work hard and that's not what happens so I was very lucky and I'm very privileged and I did not take it you know I didn't take it for granted at all um, and that was my goal um, and I just wanted to learn. I learned so much on that job, watching the principals, watching other people. It was my first job. I knew nothing and I needed to learn. I needed to be a sponge. So I literally sat back and I just watched people do everything and I tried to, to learn from everyone. So I definitely think it was a, a massive growing experience as a person, as a performer. So it was cool. And a lot of responsibility to go on for someone like Sophie. You know, when you're all of a sudden you were in jazz class last week and now you're on for a lead and you're like, what just happened? So you got to just kind of, you know, try and take it in your stride and enjoy it. But no, God. And who doesn't have ABBA? ABBA's the bomb. Like, come on. They're amazing. I haven't, I've been really lucky. I've not disliked any of my jobs. I've been really lucky. So that's good. So before the interview, I asked you to think about a question. And I yeah. know this is a very hard question. People just yeah. Think. I don't think about it, but the question is if you could be in any musical or show or anything for one night only with full costume, full lights, full sound, and a full audience with no gender roles or age roles or any like stereotypes, what character, what musical, and why? I feel like my answer is going to be pretty generic and boring. A, because it's really hard to think of all of the musicals like that. Oh, I've thought of another one. Okay, no, because it's pure I think straight away I'd have to go for a man because there's something I will actually never get to do although Bobby and company things can happen uh, I would like to I'd love to play Valjean I mean the soliloquy I'd stop there just to get to do that bit I just think it's incredible and the story's written so well and it goes from big to low and high and you get to do all those big notes oh, I just I think I'd love it and I'd like the idea of the branding and Obviously, I wouldn't want to shave my head or anything, but I'd love to know what it's like to be proper grunged up and ah, be well cool. Yeah, it have to. It's generic. It's probably been said a million times, but it's one of the best roles written. So, of course, of course, definitely that. It's a good choice. So, my next question: You have to listen carefully because some people get confused. Yes. Some oh gosh. That, some people think I'm asking a different question, but I'm not asking this one. And it is: If you had to pick between only listening to one original cast recording for the rest of your life or listening to any cast recording but only once and never going back to it? What would you pick? Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, you know what? There's a shed load I haven't heard and I'd be good to know I'd never hear them. So I'd go for everyone once. And do you, think, do you think you'd find that hard and never being able to listen to like the Waitress or Richard Cash recording or any like... I'd just get my friends together and go sing it. <laughs> I'd cheat because I know loads of people in the industry so I'm like, right, I need to hear Les Mis today, guys. Kelly Agbo, sing away. You know, Sarah Lark, on you go. Um, and then I could just grab, you know, Killian Donnelly and go, great, I need a Valjean. I need one of you. Um, yeah, I'd listen to all of them once, I reckon. That's what I'd do. Yeah. Good choice. 
So my next question is, if they made Sarah O'Connor the musical, who would play you and you can't pick yourself? That's so, that's really funny. We actually, me and my boyfriend had this conversation about movies the other day, who would play us? I mean, a musical, who would play me in a musical? I'd probably get one of my sassy Irish friends, to be fair, or an Irish actor, because it would probably irritate me if there was a bad accent. So I'm going to vote like Jess Shervey or Molly Lynch or something. I don't know Molly, I've, I've met her very briefly online. Um, we, did a, we did a Zoom quiz. Um, oh, probably an Irish actor like that, Caroline Kay. You know what, if they're Irish and have a bit of sass, go ahead. I ain't fussy, it's fine. They don't need to look like me, don't mind that. Uh, but they'd have to have my attitude down. So me as a person, that's why I think it's most important when you're playing any character. It's who this is rather than what you look like. You can stick a wig on anyone, that's all right. <laughs> so yeah, once they're Irish, one of my Irish mates, I reckon. Good choice. Um, this is the second to last question in my sure. random questions part, and it's the strangest question. I don't think you would have been asked this question before, but I ask, I've, asked, I've started asking everyone. It started a few interviews ago, and I just love this question so much. And it's, if you had to pick between never like acting, singing again, or being an the all other one, singing... The other one. <laughs> wait, wait, or being an all singing, all dancing sheep, what would you pick? Knowing you were a human before, but got turned into a sheep. Yeah, but I, I le but do I sound nice when I sing to myself as the sheep? Oh, actually, no. You, well, you sound nice to yourself, but you're a badly singing sheep. I forgot about that part. You're, you're a badly singing sheep, but you sound nice to yourself. Because I guess everyone that sings badly thinks they sound nice. Yeah, but if I think I sound great, then happy days. You know, I'd rather, at least, at least I'd be able to enjoy singing. But if I couldn't do it at all, absolutely not. The music is life. No, I'll be the sheep. I never thought I'd answer that. You're right. That is a strange one, but I like it. It's better um, than the usual, the normal questions you get asked away. It's just, if you were to make a pie, what pie would it be? I don't mind answering that, by the way. Anyone that's asked me that, that's lovely. But um, I never know the answer to that question anyway, so I'm bad at it. But this one, I'm bad at it. Do you like that? Thank you. Here all day. That's like, I know. That's, well, now I have, that's to, a now I have to ask you what your favourite joke is, if you can think of one. That was it. That was my favourite joke. <laughs> joke just, just puns. <laughs> oh, I think I'm gas. No one else does. Um, I don't have like an on the spot joke I always say you should have one ready they say for interviews you should always have one don't you um, and so I'm going to go with my bad my bad joke that I just made because I said no, I, I know how it feels I'm terrible at like thinking of jokes on the spot like it's fine if I'm talking to someone and I just but you think it ends up is me just offending someone <laughs> it's just yeah joke. I think I'm I think I'm wittier in life but I, I don't think I'm like you know stand up and have a joke you know can't do that yeah. Uh, last question out of my little group of questions is if you could be a Disney princess, which one would you be and why? Hmm. Oh. Oh, that's hard. There's so many different ones. Let's go with. God, that's really hard. It has to be one of the princesses, is it? Yeah. Uh... Oh, well, some, so people, some people I'm said gonna... the princess and then said who they would be just as any Disney character, but you have to answer the princess question and then you can just tell me if you want to which Disney character Let's go is. with Anna in Frozen because she's kick-ass and she's her own person. She's a bit quirky and she's a bit of a mess in funny ways as in she's a bit all over the place. And I like that she has red hair. So I'm going to vote with that one. And it's she's true. current and she can sing. If you can, if you see, it's frozen too. I love the music in that. Like, oh, it's like so that. good. Some of my singing, um, uh, some of my the girls I'm singing teaching are singing some Frozen Two stuff, and it's amazing. It's hard, it's hard stuff. Frozen's hard, it's hard stuff. But yeah, probably that one. I mean, they all have something really cool. I just remember thinking, oh, I do like Rapunzel though. She's wicked because I like Tangled. Again, red hair. Maybe I just want red hair. I don't know. Or does she have blonde hair in the film and it turns red? That's not her, is it? That's brave. Jesus, I need to start watching some more Disney. <laughs> um, they're all a bit kick-ass. But yeah, let's go with that answer. Let's go with Frozen. Amazing. So I've sort of come to the end of the questions that I plan. And now it's just the last little five minutes of just the important stuff. And that is mainly this interview is trying to make money for acting for others. So I've put a link down in the description. So make sure that you 
Lunate. Uh, is there anything you want to say about acting for others? Do you know anything about it? Oh gosh, we've done, oh, I can't even count how many book of collections I've done for them through the years in the shows. We do book of collections quite often for them and um, different times of the year. Um, so we'll always make, you know, the announcements at the, at the end of the show after the, the curtain call. And I mean, they're incredible. What they do is incredible. A lot, a lot of, there is quite a few, actually, there's a quite a few charities that help with the, the acting community, but it's not just like acting, it's all departments through illness, through family members being dependent on them, injury, uh, just not being able to work. So it's fantastic. So right now, I mean, they're needed more than ever. I mean, but it, you know, money's also very tight in, in every household. So anything, even if you sometimes think two quid is not going to make a difference. If everyone thinks like that, that's a lot of money. So anything, if it's the fact that you were about to go to the shop and get an ice cream, maybe just go to the shop and back and put the two quid in the, in the pot, you know, things like that. So. Thank you. So if anyone wants to follow you on social media, how do they do that? Uh, well, I'll be tagged in this video probably. Uh, I think I'm Sarah underscore C underscore O'Connor. I, I think that's what I am. Like, I should even know my own tag. That's ridiculous. But yeah, give me a follow um, if you want to see me cry online again, apparently. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yeah, no, I'm always putting stuff up between different shows and, you know, keeping fit and healthy, baking, all boring things that we all talk about online. But sure, hey ho, give us a follow anyway. And uh, last but not least, what's your advice to people to get home right now? What's the people? Sorry, I didn't hear that. What's your advice to the people at home right now? Uh, do nice things for yourself is what I feel like I'm repeating quite a lot, actually, to myself as well as other people. Um, you know, do something for your, yourself if you're having a bit of a crap day. Be it a face mask, a movie, nice food, a glass of wine, you know, whatever it is, that a bath, just a bit of you time. Make sure that you're staying physically and mentally healthy. So... Um, do your workouts as well. Make sure that you're getting up and getting fit. Don't become a couch potato because that's not going to be good for your body or your soul. Um, and also get out, get outside, um, chat to people and make sure to think about anyone that could be on their own. Pick up the phone and make sure that you're all looking out for each other and that this will pass. It will pass. And I, I mean, I'll be the first person to give my friends a cuddle. I can't bloody wait. But for now, just re resist any urge to go outside of what we've been told to do. And um, just, that sounds really typical, but just stay safe right now. It's the most important thing. You had it from the superstar. Um, <laughs> so thank you again for coming on the show. And the one last Pleasure. thing I need to say to everyone watching at home is that the location of the hidden treasure, it is buried at 